You might wonder why I'm holding a bowl in my hand. Well, today's show is devoted to one bowl desserts. We're going to show you how to make brown butter coconut blondies. So delicious with that nice crinkly top. And we're going to show you a skillet plum cake and fudgy brownie sundaes and savory oat cakes, one of England's queen's favorites. And with us today are three students from Johnson & Wales Culinary School in Rhode Island. It's very nice to have you here. Uh, you can here. you introduce yourselves for our viewers? Yes, I'm Lacey. And you? I'm Gabby. I'm from Brookville, Connecticut. I'm Christina from Monroe, Connecticut. It's very nice to have you here today. Ask questions, interrogate me. <laughs> um, uh, I'll try to answer, but you can also offer advice. Okay. You might know things that we don't know. Wouldn't that be great? I love to learn, and I hope you love to learn too. Today's show is all about learning. The first recipe that we're going to do right now, brown butter coconut cashew blondies. The pan is a typical brownie pan, but these are blondies, uh, no chocolate. And uh, the way I prepare the pan is to butter the pan first, totally, then line it with parchment, a piece going this way and a piece going this way, and it sticks nicely to the pan. And I use these binder clips you use that technique? No. no. Well, they're oven proof, and if you're going to cook in convection, it holds the uh, paper from blowing all over the place. But preparing pans like this helps you extricate the blondies from the pan easily. Now, the recipe calls for browned melted butter, and I better check this. I will pour this hot butter right into a mixing bowl, large enough to hold all the ingredients, because this is the bowl. The depth of flavor from brown butter adds a nuttiness, and that's all the milk solids in the butter that are browned. What would you do if you burned your butter? I put it through either a sieve, a very, very fine sieve, to take away the brown bits, or I put it through a coffee filter, and it just drips right through, if it's really bad. <laughs> Don't throw the butter away, because the uh, butter itself is not really burnt. It's just the milk solid bits that are burnt. Once you butter, then you flour lightly. And you would never leave it like that because you would get all kinds of spots. So you have to shake the pan, covering the entire buttered surface with a light film of flour. See, all done. Excellent. So we have our browned butter, one and a quarter cups. You can see the brown bits in there, but they're not black. If they're black, strain. A half a cup of sugar will help cool the butter and it will also help melt the sugar. And now to this, we add two cups of light brown sugar, which adds another caramelly flavor. And I keep an apple in my brown sugar. Do you do that? No, no. I've never oh. seen that. Well, you know how it becomes very, very solid and dry, so uh, an apple keeps it moist. And I understand that marshmallows do the same thing. Why do you use light and sun sugar instead of dark? Uh, dark brown, just a little too strong a flavor for this particular okay. dessert. So two cups packed, and this too can get stirred in. You can use a stiff spatula to do this, or a wooden spoon. It really absorbs all the butter. And it smells great. I'm gonna add the vanilla, two and a half teaspoons of vanilla. That's quite a bit of vanilla but blondies are vanilla, not chocolate. So Martha, do you have a favorite dessert? I know it's a hard question. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I actually really do have a favorite dessert and it's anything lemon. Okay. Mm. Citrus is one of my favorite, favorite flavors. So lemon meringue pie, mm. or lemon tart, I love. And we're going to add three large eggs and stir them in. Are those eggs from your farm? They are. Oh. So that's good. And add one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. If you find that any of your dry ingredients have lumps, you can just, of course, sift it right over the top of the mixture. And one and a half teaspoons of salt. And now the flour. So two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. So we use always uh, unbleached flour for basic baking. What about you? Have you ever you? made them whole wheat before? Uh, I haven't done these whole wheat, no. I think it might be a little heavy. And just think, you haven't dirtied a mixer, you haven't dirtied beaters, and you've used your muscles. 
So they're scraping down the sides. So you see the batter is very nice. Add your cup of cashews. These are lightly toasted. Mmm, yummy. <laughs> and the coconut, toasted coconut. And it, two cups of sweetened coconut. There's all kinds of coconut. Coconut flakes, shredded coconut like this. This has been lightly toasted in the oven. Be careful when you're toasting because it burns quickly. <laughs> I forgot about that have you a for, lot of times. Have you done that? Oh, not good. And stir this up. Mm, this adds such a nice crunchiness. Okay, so this can be put right into your pan. Sticky. That's so easy. How many minutes did that take? So fast. Hardly yeah. any time at all. So if you have friends who are craving a sweet dessert, this is a nice mm -hmm. thing to put in the oven. And you can spread this with a little spatula to an even layer. Oh, your oven, did I say, preheated to 350 degrees, please. And this is going to get that shiny, crinkly top that you always want on the top of brownies or blondies. Okay, right into the oven, set your timer for 35 minutes. So now it's time to unmold the beautiful blondies and cut these into whatever size squares you really like. And I'm using a serrated knife. These serrated knives are so fantastic. And then hmm, I think this has to go into thirds. And it smells so good. You can smell that brown butter. Now, in a restaurant, you might even trim the edges off. Edges off. But at home, you don't have to do that. I love the well, corners, so. You like the corners? Yeah. Oh. Because you get the chewy in the middle and the crunchy on the outside. It's oh, like well. the best of both best worlds. <laughs> <laughs> so these little blondies, because of high sugar content, will last quite a while. Would you like to try one? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Here, just help yourselves. So what do you think? So, so yeah, good. Really Rich good. Yeah. and buttery yeah. and... I like the cashew. cashews. Yeah. yeah. cashewy. Yeah. Good. Well, enjoy. Cake. This recipe will certainly become one of your family's favorites. Enjoy. So now we have a very interesting cake. It's baked in a skillet. And best to use a really heavy duty cast iron, enamel cast iron. You could use a cast iron skillet too, but I like the enamel. It makes a pretty presentation. And one stick of butter is put into the skillet and you just put that right in the oven to heat the whole thing. Melts the butter and heats the skillet, ready to take the batter and the fruit. So I'm gonna put this in a 350 degree oven until the butter melts and I'm finished with the batter. So could you use something else if you didn't have a skillet? Oh, uh, you can use a, a cake pan, but the heavier the better, I think. It really helps cook the fruit. Now, the fruit talking about, <laughs> uh, this is going to be a plum cake, a skillet cake, and we have some beautiful plums. I would love you to just cut the plums in half and then into wedges, maybe a quarter inch wedges. So start with the dry ingredients. One cup of flour, all purpose flour again. This is probably the simplest cake you'll ever make. There's no eggs, only the melted butter. And there's milk. One cup of granulated sugar. Two teaspoons of baking powder. And a pinch of fine sea salt. I whisk those ingredients together. And one teaspoon of vanilla, which I'm gonna to add to our one cup of whole milk. Even the measurements are just so easy here. Oh, perfect. Oh, good. So this is a lot of fruit, and that was one and a half pounds of fruit for a 12-inch skillet cake. So there's our fruit. This is for our skillet when it comes out of the oven. Okay, the butter is melted, and you pour this into your flour. Very heavy. <laughs> and there you have a nice buttered pan. Pour your milk in and stir. That's your batter. So there are all kinds of one bowl cakes that sort of fit in the same family. This is a buckle because it's fruit in a batter baked in a pan. There are crisps and crumbles which are fruit based, like a nice layer of fruit, and then a crispy topping. 
and there are uh, sonkers in, the, <laughs> in North Carolina, which is just a deep dish cobbler. So there's your very thin batter. You put your batter right into the hot pan. Now this, you can now arrange your fruit uh, kind of, you don't have to be very fussy, but all the way around. The batter will rise and sort of cover the fruit. And it might look like a lot of fruit, but I think the more the, the better. So one and a half pounds is not too much. And look at the color of those plums. Mm. That does look great. So this goes back into a 350 degree oven, the same oven, uh, for approximately an hour. Set your timer. So now with my beautiful plum skillet cake, I'm going to serve a little bit of whipped creme fraiche, creme fraiche that's stirred with a little bit of vanilla and a tablespoon or two of sugar. Creme fraiche is a wonderful substitute for sour cream or whipped cream. It's a buttermilky, soury taste that is so delicious with fruit. Now, I'm going to try to, to take out a wedge of this delicious skillet cake. Mm. So pretty. You should really taste such a delicious, simple to make dessert. You can make it right before your dinner. Sit down and eat, take this out of the oven and serve. Add this to your repertoire. You will be so thrilled you did. You like this? Thank you. If the thought of molten chocolate cakes makes you weak in the knees, wait till you try these delicious fudgy brownie sundaes. We're baking the sundaes themselves, the brownies, in ramekins, six ounce ramekins, very generously buttered with room temperature butter and a brush. Get those ready. And in the one bowl in which we're going to make this brownie, melt one stick of butter and six ounces of bittersweet chocolate. And you can, as soon as the butter is melted, it's ready to remove from the hot water bath. Now, doesn't that look good? The chocolate melts so quickly that way, and it's very glossy with the butter. This is bittersweet chocolate. Could you use other types of chocolate? Uh, you could use milk chocolate if you want a milk chocolate brownie, but be careful with the milk chocolate. The lighter the chocolate, the quicker it burns. Is that just because of the milk content? It's because of the lack of chocolate content, actually. And this is one and a half cups of sugar stirred right into the melted chocolate. This is a very, very, very delicious brownie, which you can use for a brownie recipe if you like, just and bake it in a pan. So now we're going to add three large eggs and whisk those in one by one. It's similar to the blondie recipe that we just made. So you have two grandkids, right? I have two grandchildren, mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Do you like baking with them or They're very enjoy? good. They're very good in the kitchen and they're very adept. They're very good at cracking eggs, separating <laughs> eggs. I think all children should be allowed to come into the kitchen and, and yeah work with mom. So see how nice and silky smooth this is becoming? And don't over beat, you don't have to. Just incorporate until you can see that it's well mixed. Now we're going to sift the dry ingredients, quarter of a cup of cocoa powder. And I always try to use the best Dutch processed cocoa. Do you know the difference? No. Well, cocoa is quite acidic and uh, the Dutch process uses an alkalizer to take away some of that acidity in the, in the cocoa. And then stir that in and half a teaspoon of salt. And now the flour. One half cup plus two tablespoons. And the reason that I am sifting is I just don't want lumps, which will require more stirring than necessary. There, no lumps. And this is your batter, which will go right into those buttered ramekins. And use a half cup measure. This is an ice cream scoop. These come in so handy to get even amounts into a ramekin like this. And try not to mess up the edges of your ramekins, if possible. I'm just adding the last little bit so I don't waste any of this. 
Get these right into a 350 degree oven. Set your timer for 30 minutes. And now to serve with this lovely little brownie ramekin, uh, we're going to make a salty caramel sauce. One cup of sugar, a quarter of a cup of water, and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And bring that to an amber color, just over high heat. When you see the syrup caramelizing around the edges, take it off before it is too dark. See, it's a nice color right now. And immediately add two tablespoons of butter. This will help stop the cooking of this sugar. Do not touch. <laughs> the worst burns come from caramel. Absolutely. You know that, right? Yes. It's just awful. And then uh, half a cup of heavy cream, just add it slowly. This is so, so hot. Do not use a rubber scraper. You don't want to melt the rubber into your caramel. Uh, don't use a wooden spoon. You might splinter the spoon. So I always tend to use a metal spoon when I'm stirring this final stage of the caramel. Now this will thicken as it cools. If you want to speed up that process, you can immerse this whole thing into a little bowl of iced water. But I'm just going to let that sit. It's lovely color, lovely consistency, and that's our caramel. Very easy. So now we have our caramel nicely cooled. Add a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Don't add the vanilla while the caramel is really, really hot because it just kind of kills the flavor. And always use really, really good vanilla. Quality oh, ingredients. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. So you can spoon a little bit of this. About that much is enough. Top each brownie cake. Any caramel that you have left over, just store in a covered jar in your refrigerator and eat it with a spoon when you want something <laughs> sweet. <laughs> I never keep it in my refrigerator because that's exactly what I would do. So you're going to get a little layer of caramel before you get down into your brownie. This is rich, sinful, utterly delicious. And now a scoop of vanilla ice cream, if you so choose right on top of the caramel. And how about a dollop of whipped cream? There. And that's chocolate brownie sundae numero uno. <laughs> <laughs> Even without the ice cream, this is a fantastic dessert. You and your friends will adore it. It's really good, enjoy. Oat cakes are a favorite of the Queen of England. And if you're looking for something a cross between a sweet cookie and a salty cracker, these are perfect to serve with cheese or just snack on during the day. First thing to do, toast half a cup of rolled oats. Place them in a 350 degree oven for approximately 10 minutes. You just want to smell them and uh, see that they're lightly toasted, a little bit of a golden color. And then you're ready to make your oat cakes. This is sort of a cheat on a one bowl because we're using the one bowl of your food processor. But I think making um, homemade crackers or this kind of savory cookie is a very nice thing to do. They're so much better than store-bought and uh, they're much less expensive to make. So in a bowl of a food processor, put your toasted oats Magically, these have already come out of the oven and are toasted. They're crispy. You can hear them now. They make noise as they fall into the food processor. And grind these until they're almost an oat flour. Make sure your blade in your processor is sharp. The motor lasts forever, it seems, and the, the blade, oh, there. A nice, dusty, oaty flour. A little bit coarse, and that's what you want and into your oat flour, three quarters of a cup of packed light brown sugar. This is the sweet. And one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. So put your dry ingredients into your food processor first, pulse it a few times, then add your butter. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of black pepper. It's 
So if you wanted to make more of like a savory kind of cracker, could you add like different herbs or different spices to Oh, this? sure, yeah. sure. And you can add cheese. You can make them cheese crackers, uh, cheese oat crackers. You can do all kinds of things. A, a white cheddar mixed into here would be very delicious. So now add your butter, one and a half sticks of butter cold, cut into cubes like that. Get it incorporated. And I pulse, I don't let this run very long. You want crumbly, but well incorporated butter. There, that looks good. I just wanna show you what it looks like. And then three tablespoons of ice water. So basically you're making like a pot brise here. And I'm just sprinkling the water onto this two. And you can add your third right down the feed tube. Starting to come together. And that's it, don't overdo. And that is your dough. And we want to chill this dough, wrapped well in plastic wrap. And so what I like to do is do it right in the plastic. Just press this into a flat rectangle, all the same thickness, because uh, it'll be easier to roll that way. If you've made it into a ball, it would take a long time to roll that out. What did we do before wax paper and <laughs> parchment and plastic wrap? So put this in the fridge, chill it, and then take it out a few minutes before you want to roll it. And we're gonna form the cookies right now. So now the rolling. Roll your chilled dough right on top of parchment paper. You need a piece about 10 inches by 12 inches. We start rolling it first and then press in to the top surface about a quarter of a cup of rolled oats. These don't have to be toasted because they are going to toast right in the oven. And I'm using a nice ball bearing rolling pin. It makes it very easy for a hard dough like this. You should get about 32 individual crackers. Very nice. Now, a little bit of mold and salt. That's that nice flaky salt, uh, sea salt that's so delicious. It's strong, so don't put too, too much. And then using a slightly fluted cutter, I always start in the middle. You want them approximately the same size. And then cut in the opposite direction. So you're going to get somewhere in the vicinity of 30 or 32 crackers. So just put this right on a baking sheet and chill it if it's too soft to lift off the individual crackers. Chilling it just for a few minutes will do the job. So now just space these neatly on a parchment lined baking sheet and bake in a 350 degree oven for about 28 minutes. I know two little children who are gonna love these oat cakes. Okay, in the oven, set your timer. So wouldn't you like to treat yourself like a queen and have oat cakes like Queen Elizabeth? I would. Serve your very finest cheddar cheese. What a lovely little snack, any time of day. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. See you on the next Martha Bakes. Thanks, students, very nice to have you. Thanks, thanks for having, having us. us. Coarsely chop one pound of chocolate using a serrated knife and transfer it to a bowl. Bring two cups of heavy cream to a boil. Pour the cream over the chocolate and let stand for about 10 minutes. Don't stir, this can make the chocolate grainy. When cooled, stir until smooth. Let the chocolate cool to desired consistency. Pourable to cover a cake and thicker for a filling.